FSB. This is an Eyewitness News update. Good morning, everyone. It is Tuesday, February 14th. I'm Nicole Nalepa, and we have a lot of stories to get to this morning. But let's start you off first, where in investigators are trying to determine a motive behind that mass shooting at Michigan State University, which left three people dead and five people hurt. Now, police say the suspect took his own life as he was confronted by police off campus in nearby Lansing. Those five people who were hurt are in critical condition this morning. And state, local, and federal officers also responded to the shooting in a coordinated effort. In fact, the FBI says it is assisting the investigation at this time as authorities work around the clock trying to figure out why this happened. And a viral video taken in Waterbury has sparked quite a conversation between police, the NAACP, and the community. Now, back on February 2nd, James Thomas was arrested. And there is some body cam footage here, as you see, of the situation as it unfolded. Now, investigators say he was reaching for a gun when police brought him down. One officer ended up punching Thomas in the face. Last night, a forum about the arrest was held, and some people believe that police used excessive force. However, investigators say, given the circumstances surrounding the incident, the actions were appropriate. He had a loaded 9mm handgun in his uh, right front waistband, an extended 30-round magazine loaded in his backpack, as well as uh, an incredible amount of heroin and fentanyl, uh, both in bagged form for street sale and in raw form. Police also said that the use of less lethal force, such as tasers, are found ineffective in the winter due to heavy clothing, such as bulky jackets. Organizers are promising to hold more forums like this in the future. And a man who police say was high on PCP is now under arrest after being accused of attacking multiple people and an officer in West Hartford. And we want to warn you that some viewers may find this video pretty disturbing. Police say 39-year-old Samuel Rivas lunged at an officer Sunday right outside of the price right after attacking several shoppers, including an elderly woman who ended up falling to the ground and hitting her head. Now, a good Samaritan jumped in to help the officer who was held down, holding Revis down, that is, until he was cuffed. He now faces several charges and is being held on a $250,000 bond. And concerned parents in Manchester are talking publicly about school safety after numerous incidents. During a school board meeting yesterday, families say that they're concerned about students' safety after regularly hearing about not only fights, but bullying and other dangerous situations within the school's walls. This past Friday, an assistant principal was shoved by a student and hospitalized. In January, a high school student brought a loaded gun to school. And in December, a student brought a splat R ball gun. And not to mention numerous fights have broken out. Parents are now pushing others to listen to their kids about what is going on at school. And the board heard other issues on teacher safety and students' mental health as well, but have not yet offered up any solutions to these matters. New this morning, a federal appeals court will be reconsidering a lawsuit that challenged Connecticut's policy allowing transgender girls athletes to compete as females. Now, we learned late last night that a majority of judges have agreed to rehear this case. The issue was first brought to court this past September by a conservative group that said that the policy to allow transgender girls to compete as females was discriminatory. The rehearing of this case has not yet been scheduled, but we will be sure to keep you posted when a date is announced. And some Connecticut lawmakers are looking to increase access to birth control. Two Republican senators are proposing a bill that would allow pharmacists to describe the drug. And right now in our state, only a physician can prescribe birth control. However, millions of women lack access to health care or have to wait for an appointment. And State Senator Heather Summers says many women need to be able to receive their prescription in a fast, faster timeline. It could be months before you get in. And then many times they cancel and they reschedule you because of staffing issues. So why should we let a woman go without access to birth control during that time that she can't see a physician? Senator Summers says women can still see their doctor, but this would serve as another way to create access. About 20 other states have passed similar legislation across the country. Scott? All right, thanks, Nicole. Hey, we've got a great day for you for Valentine's Day. Love is in the air, and that's just about it. A little bit of a breeze, but other than that, we're talking about abundant sunshine today. Hi, everybody. 704 on this Tuesday. It is Valentine's Day, February 14th. A couple of scattered showers, maybe a snowflake overnight. That is now gone, as you can see. Just enough cloud coverage out there to, this morning to make for a beautiful, beautiful start. Roads might be a little bit damp, but that wind 
wind is out there drying things off from those scattered showers. A little condensation and moisture on the roads this morning, but not a big deal. Visibility at a perfect 10. And according to early warning future cast tomorrow's weather today, just abundantly sunny. Look at this. I just ran the clock down. It's not broken. There's just nothing on it through 5 p.m. Now tonight, a little bit of an increase in cloud coverage. Here we go. This is tomorrow morning. We're waking up to mostly cloudy skies and then uh, maybe a little bit of a break in the action by late morning into the early afternoon. So we'll go uh, mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies tomorrow. And then Thursday looks pretty good as well with increasing clouds and some rain Thursday night into Friday. All right, now in the meantime, enjoy these temperatures. Remember, 20 is the number you should be seeing in this column. 39 in East Granby, 38 in Stores, 35 in Kent, and Wolcott at 36. Whoa. 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 That is gorgeous. Isn't that? <laughs> wow. I could. <laughs> if this is heaven. It is. It's 43 degrees, Nicole. I and see St. Peter. I think you might. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it really is. Whoa. Wow. Hello, New Haven. Just gorgeous. 44 degrees in New Haven this morning. A little bit of a breeze out there. All right, so we have again temperatures in the mid to upper 30s, low 40s this morning. There is a temperature differential up from yesterday, anywhere from 1 to 7 degrees to 8 degrees warmer at Bradley. And we were up yesterday from the day before, so we're building on those overnight lows. Here's the sustained wind to 20 miles an hour in Chester. That's a sustained, that's not a gust. Let's check in with it. Ooh, 37 mile an hour wind gust in Chester. Woo wee. Yeah, that'll make things feel a little bit cooler, like it's 32 in Chester instead of low 40s. Upper 20s, low to mid 30s, so grab a light jacket, grab a windbreaker as you're heading out the door this morning. Love is in the air, every sight and every sound. Beautiful start, sunny and breezy today. And again, the only thing you'll find in the sky is sun and love. 46 to 51, nice start, sunny and breezy. Here's the temperature trend today. Uh, close to 50 degrees in inland Connecticut and right at 50 degrees for the shoreline. So once again, get out there and enjoy all of this abundant sunshine. Don't forget the sunglasses. Sun glare could represent a little bit of a problem on the roads this morning. Abundant sun, breezy. Sun was up at 648. Tonight, clouds increase, a little cooler. And uh, then tomorrow... A mostly cloudy day, maybe some partial clearing late in the day, and then uh, increasing clouds Thursday, Thursday night rain into Friday. Friday, it looks like it rains until about 1 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and then we see partial clearing as the temperatures drop. The wind is going to be cranking. 40 mile an hour plus wind gusts expected on Friday, and then Saturday is still breezy but cooler. Sunday, we rebound to 49. Monday, up to 53. What a remarkable wow. forecast. All right, 708. Nicole, back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. Happening today, in response to the uptick in wrong way crashes, DOT workers will begin installing special reflectors right on 84 westbound today, right on and off the ramps from exits 29 to 32. And these reflectors will glow red when triggered by wrong way drivers. This development, of course, comes shortly after a wrong way driver crash happened on 84. 84 westbound seriously injuring two drivers Saturday morning. And we're learning more about plans to fill the seat of the late representative Quentin Williams, a state lawmaker who was killed by a wrong way driver last month in Cromwell. Five schools in Middletown will be closed for a special election on February 28th. Those schools are seen on your screen there. And school officials say the day off will be treated like a snow day and made up in June. Now, voters will vote to fill Representative Williams' seat in the 100th Assembly District. If you remember, Williams was killed back on January 5th, just hours after he was sworn in for his third term. Thank you so much for tuning in to Eyewitness News on this Sweethearts Day. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Please go outside, enjoy this beautiful day, be healthy, stay positive, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.